The Bible says in Matthew 12, 21, in his name, the nations will put their hope. Welcome to The Hope Connection with Harry Jackson. Stay tuned. In the next 30 minutes, we will share with you how God wants you to live in peace, joy, and prosperity. Bishop Jackson is the senior pastor of Hope Christian Church in Beltsville, Maryland. He travels the world ministering to millions, teaching us how we should not live in fear, but how to become an overcomer, touching our world with the love of Jesus Christ, the hope for all mankind. And now your host, Harry Jackson. Welcome to the Hope Connection. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. Today's broadcast deals with how do we move into our promised land. Every single believer has some dimension of blessing that God has prophesied that he was going to lead us into, or somehow we've seen a glimpse of this new territory. We're supposed to go for it. And in this message, something you never hear talked about is going to be explored. And that is, how do we engage the miraculous power of God? There are what I would call passive miracles. When we obey what God says, God moves in supernatural ways with favor, authority, anointing, and routes the enemy. But also there are these interactive miracles where it's sort of like in the New Testament, we talk about the working of miracles. In other words, God tells you to do something, you cooperate with him, and he displays his mighty power. Both are going to be talked about on this edition of the Hope Connection. Whenever good news is slow in coming, when bad circumstances don't seem to improve, when we feel forsaken and powerless, Bishop Jackson wants you to know that the change you long for can be yours. For a donation of $25 or more, we will send you this inspirational book titled, You Were Born For More. Discover six steps to breaking through to your destiny. Bishop Jackson teaches you to open the pathway to blessings, draw closer to Christ, how to grow in love and endurance, and how you can experience the favor of God. Call right now. The number is 888-333-6196 or go to the website at thehopeconnection.org. If you would like to write us, the address is on the screen. God wants us to experience His love, to be a light to the world, and this book will guide you in that purpose. You will believe again and discover that you were truly born for more. Our message today is God's miraculous power and your destiny. God's miraculous power and your destiny. How many understand that upon occasion, it's going to take the intervention of God in order to bring you out into the destiny he's ordained for you. What many of us do, unfortunately, is we blame other people for the problem, the rejection, the sense of lack or loss that we have in our lives. Instead of looking to God to turn things around on our behalf and make a way for us and settle us into our promised land of relationships or finance or career trajectory we want to be in, often when we feel pressured and the heat of a battle is on, we go to blaming people in the natural instead of looking for the miraculous intervention of the living God. So all the battles in the book of Joshua, we've looked at this a little bit before. All the three major battles tell us a story. The three major battles tell us three things, essentially. They tell us what or a picture of what God is doing when we're attempting to advance. It shows us the strategy God uses to bring us into victory. And it also should give us hope that if God could deliver these dear people from such overwhelming odds, guess what? God can deliver you. We need to believe that. In fact, when we're coming to promised land and we are faced with battles, the promised land is a picture or prophetic type 
of the fulfillment of God's promise in our generation. It's a picture of how the kingdom of God operates. Three major battles in the promised land, Jericho, which broke open the heavens. Jericho, which dealt with defeating the moon god and demonic principalities and powers. And how many know this is the most powerful region in the world and there are demonic entities that have been assigned to try to make some of y'all crazy. Amen, but be of good cheer. He has overcome the world and he'll deliver you from that spirit of crazy. Amen, that's trying to jump on you, your family, your children, your children's children. Amen, we're gonna overcome we're not going to have the same outlook, mindset, and situation as the world does. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. AI, second major battle, it explores personal and corporate holiness. And it's all about the devoted thing. God said, I want this first city, Jericho, to become a tithe of the rest of the land. I want you to give me everything that comes out of Jericho so that I can bless the rest. That's the secret of the tithe. Do you realize that? We give him the first 10 so he can bless the rest. Amen? If we take what belongs to God instead of having something devoted to God, it does not complete the partnership with God and us regarding our finances. Are, are you saying that because you just want us to give our tithes? Uh, yes, I am saying that because I want you to give your tithe. But I want to give you to give your tithe for another reason maybe than you think about. And that is so I don't have to be dealing with writing you a check out of my benevolence fund. I would like to have you be the person that comes into personal victory, that you've got more than enough, come on somebody, because you made a covenant with the Lord, and you're not running around here like many people talking about, well, the church should have people going through. Well, I just want to know, why is it that you're always going through? Why didn't, won't you just get up into the blessed territory of covenant finances, amen? And, and so there's a lesson about personal and corporate holiness as it relates to AI, and it's an amazing story, and the devoted thing, the consecrated thing, the thing that is given to God. How many know that AI tells the story of, of a family and a guy named Aiken who basically kept a big sliver, a wedge of gold, some silver coins, and a garment from Babylon. In other words, he went for gold and some fancy clothes and a few coins in his pockets. And that's why I declared that he was from DC. He's over impressed with what he was wearing, his chains in his pocket, praise God, and the gold and the bling that he was wearing, hallelujah. Be that as it may, Gibeon is the third major battle. It's a battle against five kings. And we need to understand that in advancing into your promised land, at the moment that you begin to move into your preferred destiny, the enemy will strike out at you because he's afraid if he doesn't derail you, if he doesn't take you off track, that you will fulfill your destiny. And so typically, here's how he rolls. He fights you hardest in your beginning moments. When you enter the promised land, as you start to accelerate, the greatest onslaught of attack will come to you. That's incredibly important. And we need to understand that in our world, in our life. Now, we need to begin to think about this issue of how we battle and how we war. And so for the next few minutes, I'm gonna to talk to you really about the issue 
of moving in the supernatural. And I've talked to you about this a few weeks ago, about working of miracles, cooperating with the miraculous intervention of God. Here's how we roll. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10, I just want to use this as a little bit of a framework for you to really understand where you are. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Notice in verse number eight, this supernatural grace moves. But what we're going to see here is really a passive miracle. It's a passive miracle. You're in the promised land. You're following the guidance of God. Sometimes God releases favor and opportunity to you without announcing to you, hey, I'm getting ready to do a major miracle. You're in the promised land. You're placed that you're supposed to be. You're walking with God, and he's about to intervene. Verse 8 says, And the Lord said to Joshua, Fear them not. He's talking about the five kings. For I have delivered them into your hand. There shall not a man of them stand before you. So God has been telling Joshua all through the book, don't fear, be courageous. Don't fear, be courageous. Why was God telling Joshua not to fear repeatedly? Because one of the things that Joshua had to overcome was a slave mentality, a slave history. Come on. He's in unfamiliar territory. Here in the third battle, this is the only battle where Joshua was dealing with his enemies in open territory. If you think about it, all the other stories, Joshua attacked Jericho. They were shut up in the city. There were defined parameters and boundaries of the battle. You got that idea? Ai was also another shut up city. They had a way that they fooled the people to come out against them and move with them. This battle was the most dangerous battle because they fought their enemy in open territory. And there was no easy line of demarcation, no line of scrimmage if we're talking about from football terms, right? There's no specific place where you say, well, the enemy's lines are here and our lines are there. They are just running up on these people. Look at verse number Nine, it says, Joshua therefore came to them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. So part of this miracle is that God says, chase them down, fight them. And Joshua could have said, Lord, I'm tired. I've been fighting all day. It is early evening and you said, chase them down. One of the things that's going on, what we're going to see here, is God's moving Joshua from Kronos, that's clock time, to Kairos, that's strategic time. Sometimes God says, I need for you to fight with all your might right now. Not tomorrow, uh, you can't get back to it two days from now. It's not something you can do next month. Some things, you're going to get an answer if you go up at once. Anybody with me? So I believe that we need to go up at once. And uh, what happened in this particular case is that God did an amazing thing and he began to slaughter the enemies. Verse 11 will show you that the miraculous happened. Hailstones came from heaven, knocked out the enemy, killed them. And it was very, very, very powerful. And it is what I call a passive miracle. What do you mean passive miracle? I mean, he, the miracle wasn't invoked wasn't called for, 
by Joshua. God knew what he was going to do. Joshua's obedient walk set up the opportunity for God to do what only God could do. If I had the time to go into this, I would take you through a scenario, almost act out what if God told Joshua X, Y, and Z, and how he was going to hit one guy on the scrimmage line and kill another guy on the scrimmage line and how he's going to do it without wounding any of Joshua's men. I think that would have been too much information for Joshua. So he just did it and didn't explain it. God will never introduce anything to you prophetically that he is not willing to perform without your intervention. If God says, I'm going to double your income in this next year, he's saying several things all at once. You see what? He's giving you a goal of what he's doing, but he's also telling you, I need you to have faith for it. If he's got to mention it, you need to believe him for it. If he's just going to do it, he doesn't have to mention it. He's God without you, and he only lets you in on this unknown information when he wants faith to be a part of your portion. Are y'all y'all with me? So, so God had set a trap for his enemies, and he was going to pull this thing off. It was too sophisticated for Joshua to even understand. So instead of having him go back and forth, with Joshua over, how can this be, Lord? Tell me how. I don't understand. Instead of dealing with all that, God said, just go up all night and attack them. Boom! God just took out his enemy. Some of you, if you don't waver from the last thing that God told you to do and remain faithful in that thing that God has ordained, God may be just ready to release his supernatural power to deliver you in a miraculous way that he's already planned. They don't get it. I'm going to look at y'all. Y'all get, y'all get this. God's got a plan. Turn to somebody and tell them God's got a plan. Turn to somebody else and say, God's already thought it out. In other words, he's already got a game plan. He's already got a choreographed situation where the enemy's going to take a step left. He's going to take a step right, and he's just going to wipe the devil out. Then notice, though, in Joshua chapter 12, that something else happened. God spoke to Joshua in a time where now faith will have to be required for this. Now, this is a little bit challenging. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 said this, Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the sons of Israel and said in the sight of Israel, O son, Stand still at Gibeon, and O moon in the valley of Agilon. What happened? I don't have time to say more than this. God told Joshua, I'm about to do something. I need you to tell the sun and the moon to stop. He was praying. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a bold thing for God to tell this man. I don't think he just made it up. I don't think he came up with it. I think he's praying. New Testament, we talk about the working of miracles. In other words, that God is willing to do a miracle, but he's working by supernatural guidance to release a miracle. When God moves upon us with the working of miracles and spiritual operation, very often the faith to do what God declares for us to do comes with the direction that comes from God. In other words, when God spoke it, suddenly this man's heart was filled with enough faith to believe God. Oh, some of y'all didn't hear that today. 
So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Faith is imparted when you hear. Faith is downloaded when you hear. Faith comes from the heart of God into the spirit of man when the revelatory word of God, the rhema of God, is released from heaven. All of a sudden, that which is needed to work the miracle came down at the very same time. And then he told the sun and the moon to stand still. And as we read, it looks like he fought for a whole nother day. There are all kind of folklore about how long the sun and moon stood still. Some people say it was 26 minutes or something like that. I don't know where they get that. That's not what the Bible says. Did you read as I or hear as I heard, read it? That they fought how long? All day. So it sounds like there was an all day thing going on. The regular chronos, sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset, was stopped. And God allowed there to be the cessation of time long enough for them to let the process of that first miracle and that authority to defeat these five kings work itself out. Sometimes we are faced with problems and we start to see a manifestation of God's victory and we feel like, God, time's running out on me. I need you to do something now. And in this case, it says something very powerful to me. It says that God can extend the season of fruitfulness, the season of harvest, the season of supernatural blessing in your life. And some of you right now have been in a place where there's favor. You don't understand why there's favor. I'm talking to somebody here who is on a temporary assignment your contract worker and God's allowed your contract to be more than the two months it originally was set for. It's now several years and you're living in this place where you got opportunity and funds that are going on long, far long beyond the prescription. This may be a time you need to ask the Lord, hey, how should I pray about this? How should I think about this? And it's a realm of working of miracles and seeing victory. It is with a great sense of urgency that I come to you today. Like the great apostle Peter, I believe I've been commissioned to feed the Lord's sheep in this critical season. The nations of the world are in a great end time struggle. Darkness and evil contend with the light. Anarchy, hostility, and fear are literally overwhelming God's people. But I believe that God has called our ministry to bring a word of hope and healing to the United States, Canada, and the nations of the world. We are dedicated to teaching and preaching the gospel with power and authority. For nearly 38 years, I've preached to strengthen individual believers, helping them turn their tragedies to triumphs. In addition, I have been a student of current affairs and a cultural commentator through numerous mediums opinion editorials in print, news commentary on television and radio, and the convener of national forums on race and practical issues of faith. Will you help me fulfill this great calling? Our television partners will help us take a word of hope to Africa by funding the purchase of mobile medical clinics and other missions initiatives. Our partners will also assist us in taking a word of hope and racial healing to strife-torn cities by facilitating regional events under the banner of the Reconciled Church Movement. And finally, the teaching and resources we have developed for you will strengthen you for your own unique calling in these last and evil days. God bless you. This is Bishop Harry Jackson. Lives are being changed, so call right now or go to our website. The information is on the screen. Help Bishop Harry Jackson bring hope and racial healing to the world.
Call 888-333-6196 or go to thehopeconnection.org. Welcome back. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. The lesson today was very important as far as I'm concerned because I meet a lot of people who are reticent to receive Jesus because they feel like God should have done something to block a disease their family member had or to keep them from getting into this trouble or to prevent some big accident that occurred in their lives. And as I talk more with them, I find one pattern in it all. They're angry with God, but they never really ask the Lord Jesus to come into their heart and to give him complete control over their life and their destiny. In other words, they were expecting God to somehow, out of his benevolence, reach into our world uninvited and to make a game-changing difference for us. It simply doesn't work that way. God has made us free moral agents, and we are the ones that have to reach out to him and decide that we want him to be involved in our affairs and that we're going to work for and worship him as an expression of our love for God. So today, if you need a miracle in your life, if you need God to turn something around, I want to invite you to pray with me a prayer that turns your life over to Jesus. Just pray right after me this prayer. Heavenly Father, that's it, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And right now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and my life and to be Lord of my life. If you've read that prayer, I believe that God heard you. He's begun that process. Our team at our church is willing to send out materials and help you on this new journey that you're just beginning. You need a little help. You need a local church to be involved in. All of those things will help you move on this important journey. And then finally, I want to thank those who have been involved in helping us keep this program on the air, promoting the advance of the gospel. It's truly been amazing how many folks have responded to us by email and letter and reached out to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for helping us take this gospel literally to the four corners of the world. And if you're ever in the Washington, D.C. area, I want you to come and visit us in Beltsville, Maryland, 25 minutes or so, just north of the city. Beautiful new sanctuary, great worship, children's ministry, amazing people, 24 nationalities serving Jesus together. And remember, we're saving a seat just for you. See you again next time. Thank you for joining Bishop Jackson today. The preceding program has been brought to you by the partners and friends of the Hope Connection. For more information, please visit our website at www.thehopeconnection.org. Join us next week for an exciting adventure into God's Word.